Um, it's Damon Brown. You're watching the Bring Your Worth Show, Bring Your Worth TV, coming to you every Wednesday and Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> Sometimes Saturdays too, but some other days. <laughs> Thank you for coming through. I'm going to get you all set up on Amazon. I'm excited. Three, two, one. Welcome to the show, Bring Your Worth TV. Thank you for your patience. Ironically, we had some technical difficulties on the day. We're going to talk about how you put a video and or audio podcast together. Thanks for joining me. Again, my name is Damon Brown. I come to you every Wednesday and every Sunday at 11 p.m. Standard Time, Vegas time. I'm doing something special this month where I'm coming to you live every single workday of the month. The days that I'm not coming live, I actually have some special program for you all, so be sure and come through. I'll be talking about the special thing I'll be doing tomorrow on Wednesday, the 20th. <laughs> If you want more support as a side hustler, as a solopreneur, otherwise a non-traditional entrepreneur, I'm a business coach. I've done two startups, sold the second one, done a few TED Talks, one on the second stage of the main TED, and then a few TEDx's. I'm here to support you on your particular journey. If you like that kind of information and you want to get it for free, be sure and subscribe. It's free. I think it'll always be free, as I say, say every, every, every year. Coming on the three-year anniversary of this is episode 348. Thank you for riding with me. I appreciate y'all. If you want to learn more about my work, I have my new book coming out. In fact, it's a new book of old books, otherwise known as a collection. The complete Bring Your Worth collection. The whole thing's in there, dating back to 2016. Do you remember what you were doing in 2016? I was writing these. 2016 was a minute ago. All my collected works... Aside from a couple of things here and there that I did with some other organizations, but it'll actually get you to the point where you can uh, level up your work, uh, emotional intelligence, your side hustle, your passive income. All those things are covered in here. In total, it's about six books in this one collection. It's coming out October 20th, almost exactly a month from now. Be sure and plug in. The links are all below if you're interested in that. In case you missed it, the top of this month, again, it's a special month. Um, I just wanted to support you on a different type of way. I usually just do lives on Wednesday, but I've been doing lives <laughs> almost every single, actually every single day since Labor Day over here in the States. So since September 5th, so I've been doing lives every weekday for uh, about two weeks now. As y'all know from last week, I had to get like some of my special equipment because my throat was starting to, to get worn out. I'll mention some of that here too. One of the things I did though to kick it off was a marathon of all the lives from the past year. It's a long program. It's everything you need, again, from passive income to uh, finding a mental, uh, upping your mental health and emotional health to finding out how to build your startup from the ground up to even how to help with launching some of the stuff you want to launch, whether it's a broadcast thing, like a TV thing, or if you want to launch your book, all of it's in there. It's been a lot of love and support for it. It's a marathon of nine hours. You do not need to sit and watch the whole thing. <laughs> and in fact, as I've said, I would encourage you to put on YouTube or your favorite app that you get this on, on uh, Amazon, shout out to y'all, or even on LinkedIn, plug in your headphones, put it on your phone, and then just go for a long walk or go for a long drive or even just meditate at night, whatever gets you to where you need to be. Be sure and check it out. Thank you for all the love for it. And I think, uh, I think it'll help y'all get to the next level. Uh, yesterday, connected with James Oliver Jr., who's actually the head of two organizations, the Parent Parentpreneur Foundation, which focuses on supporting African Americans who have little kids who are trying to do their startups. Again, the same demographic and energy that I have. And he's also the new CEO, or actually the new company, but CEO of Kabila, which is actually connecting people as co-founders. If you know any of my background, I've founded um, a couple different apps. The second app, we had two co-founders, so it was three of us total. There's all kinds of dynamics, interesting things that comes with that, and you want to make sure you have the right blend. His new app will help you with that. Check, it, check in, because we end up talking about build your subscribers from zero. I now have about 18,000 plus of y'all. We talk about how I did that. If you're tuning in today to build up your podcast, to build up your video blog or whatever you want to call it, to build up anything. You do not want to miss yesterday's episode. Be sure and check in. 
it's only about a half an hour long, but we cover a lot of ground in those 20, 25, 30 minutes. Do not miss that one. And I think that's it for the house. Oh, two other things. On Sunday, as promised, freelance writing, everything you need to know. This is my most comprehensive guide that I made for bringyourworth.tv, covering just about everything I know as a longtime freelance journalist. I've written for Playboy, The New York Post, ARP The Magazine, Family Circle, The Source, Spin Magazine, a lot of folks. That's how I made a living pretty much through a decade, decade and a half. It was a long time, but that was the only thing I did. Not even books were in the mix. There was a period of time where all I did was freelance write. I'm giving as much game as possible. The feedback to our previous episodes about freelance writing got, got again, a lot of good feedback. Um, I wanted to try to get everything into a comprehensive guide. So again, we're approaching the, the last quarter. As of this recording, the last quarter of the year is going to begin in about two weeks. It's not that long, y'all. So if you want to get into freelancing, be sure and check out this comprehensive guide. It's about an hour and 15 minutes. It won't take up that much of your time. And I cover a lot of ground there from pitching to how to find publications to how to get paid to even how to build passive income with your freelance work. Plug in, check it out. I, I appreciate that y'all have uh, really dug it so far. And lastly, tomorrow, as I mentioned, we're going to be doing some specials. How do I make time to rest? Trust me, after this marathon in September, I'm going to be resting. <laughs> so it's definitely on my mind. <laughs> and this covers all the lives where I talk about how you can find balance in your life. I know a lot of y'all are driven like I am. If you're driven that hard, you need to make time to rest. There's a lot of my friends and colleagues. You know who you are. I hope you are doing better who have pushed themselves so hard or are going through health things and realizing how precious that health is. This is kind of to give as much game as possible, any insight that I have to you so that you find a way to balance those things out. One of the reasons why I'm able to uh, the complete uh, Bring Your Worth collection, again, out on October 20th, one of the reasons why I was able to do all those books, it's um, actually my 27th book. And one of the reasons why I was able to do all those things is that I was able to find balance in between, whether it's taking a nap, taking long walks, spend time with my family, spend time with my friends, just not working sometimes. And as entrepreneurs and as creators, we're so passionate, we can forget that we actually need to take a break. And those insights come from that break. There's a marathon. I, I believe it's going to be about three hours long. So just like, just like the rule here, it's going to be live. So it's going to be a podcast format. So if you want to sit here and connect with me and talk with me, that's cool. But if you just want to tap in at 1.11 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Vegas time tomorrow, exactly 24 hours from now, and just tap in and then just listen. And I talk about better sleeping habits. I talk about uh, a little bit on meditation or at least how to find yourself centered, uh, getting deeper into inner peace. Anything that you're kind of struggling with, hopefully I cover that. And it's about five or six lives that are in the marathon. Be sure and tune in because I love to help you get to the next level. All right. Today's show. Ooh, I'm excited about this show. As you can probably tell, all the podcast equipment you need. There's something amazing shift that happened. And I talk about this again on the aforementioned episode yesterday uh, when I was interviewed by uh, James Oliver Jr. Again, thanks for having me on my show, on your show and 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 for uh, sharing an episode with, with my viewers too. I appreciate that. But we got into this discussion about how things are different now. And the big shift happened probably about, I can five years ago, you can correct me in the comments, about five years ago when Joe Rogan, who is now probably the number one podcaster in the world and has been for several years, when he got a serious bag, I think it was eight figures, from Spotify to exclusively do podcasts for their network. I think it's ended by now, but it was a big deal at the time. You had Joe Budden, and if you're in the hip hop communities, you're familiar with him. I've been following his work. All these different things are happening at the exact same time. Charlemagne, like all these different things are happening at the exact same time. And what occurred was that podcasting, number one, became a lucrative business, at least for a handful of folks. I know sometimes it doesn't quite work out. But also there were more people than ever there interested in podcasting. And this is important because I know folks and some of you are probably watching who have mentored me or who I've talked to who have had podcasts for 10, even 20 years, some of y'all. 
what y'all understand and what we all need to understand is that this second wave of podcasting isn't just audio. It's also video. So again, you have the Joe Rogans, you have the Tim Ferrises. There's a lot of people in mind. Again, back to Joe Button, where they'll have a podcast, uh, Rick Roll. They'll have a podcast and then they'll also have the video to it, too. And so that's why when I'm talking about the podcast equipment you need, I'm going to be talking about lighting, but I'm also going to be talking about mics. I'm going to be talking about a few other things because a lot of the podcasts we're doing today, if you want to consider bringing worth that TV, a podcast, it has a video element of it. So stuff I'm talking about today will absolutely impact you as an audio podcast, if that's what you want to focus on. And also I'm giving game if you want to do the audio and you also want to do the video which again is kind of the wave right now. And so, uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff to cover, so let's get into it. Okay, the first thing you need to get right is your sound. Your sound is really important. Um, hopefully you can hear me now. <laughs> your sound is really important. Um, I've talked about this quite a bit as far as sound. Sorry, I forgot to put my question in there. How do you put your audio together? How do you get your sound together? For me, it begins with the mic. I like this mic a lot. I mentioned it um, in some of the earlier episodes. Sorry for the for the louder sound here. This is, I want to make sure I get the name right because it is a complicated name. Uh, Audio Technica ATR2100X USB. All the links are below and all that good stuff. So you don't need to write it down. All the information is below. If you're watching on Amazon, it'll be highlighted on the side if you want to grab the product. What I love about this, and again, I mentioned in the episode a couple of days ago, is that it actually is really good at pinpointing where the audio is coming from and isolating everything else. Sounds super simple, but it's not. I've had a couple of mics. In fact, some of them that I mentioned on the show, um, again, we're approaching three years of the show. So my mics have evolved. So you see some of the earlier shows and sometimes my mics won't quite sound right. Or um, we started in the, uh, right at the beginning of the pandemic. So sometimes my kids would run in the room, not exaggerating. Check out the earlier episodes. <laughs> my kids would run in the room because we were homeschooling, obviously. And then the noise will be coming from them. And you hear my two boys fighting or something. That doesn't, not only are they older, so they're not here, but <laughs> that doesn't happen as much, I found, with this mic. It has a great sense of focus. It's called, uh, uh, I, I can, I always screw up the name of it. I want to say uh, Cardio, Caradio. I'm always going to mess up the name of it, but it's a fantastic setup here. In fact, I believe I have the box around here. If I can't find the box, then I'll go ahead and uh, you can click on the link, get the details. I know my tech I actually minored in computer science, but this is one of those areas where <laughs> what I will say, though, is that it uses a certain technology that will pinpoint exactly where you're coming from and isolate the rest of it. All you, you, all you audiophiles know exactly what I'm trying to say. <laughs> For those that don't know what I'm trying to say, just click on the link. It gets into the details. It begins with a C but it's a certain way of focusing the audio to your mouth, which is super valuable, particularly when it comes to audio podcasts. This is an important point. If you're watching Bring Your Worth TV or if you're doing a video slash audio podcast, you have an advantage. If my audio is a little bit off or if it's a little bit muffled, or again, if my little kids run in the room, you can see my very New Jersey hands, which are always flying all over the place. But you can also see my facial expression. There's stimulation here. It's a different vibe. If you're doing audio only podcasts, you got to make sure, again, let me show you the mic. You got to make sure this stuff is straight because you're not going to have the, uh, the companion piece. You're not going to have the multimedia part of it. So if you're looking to launch a podcast and it's going to be audio only for the beginning or for the foreseeable future, Double down, pay the money for a good mic. This mic is under $100 as of this recording. I think it was in the $75 range, which is actually cheaper than some of the, frankly, less reliable mics I got in the past. So it's not necessarily about the price you pay, but if it is a good mic, it's worth the price, particularly, again, if you're going audio only. Another thing I'd recommend 
which if you're a regular of the show, you're like, what is this thing behind Damon's head? This is soundproofing. Now, depending on the type of podcast you want to do and like your budget, you know, I know some folks that will like rent a studio and knock out like four podcasts in a day and, and they get their money back and sponsorships, whole different, whole different discussion. Maybe I'll do a live about that in the future. My point is that some of us are doing it literally here. Like this is my office. This is my home. This is where I live. And so right to the, to the side of me, to the left of me is my, um, my office closet. And if you buy um, any of the later uh, Bring Your Worth books, particularly like Build From Now, which was a book that came out, I think the deluxe version came out about a year and a half ago, two years ago. It's also, again, included in the complete Bring Your Worth collection. The audio book will be coming soon. But all, all the later books were recorded right there in my closet. If you're going to have this kind of setup where it's in your closet and you have relatives at home, <laughs> right? Like little kids or whatever the case may be, and you're not alone. Or even if you're like, we live right off the strip in Las Vegas. So it's like, well, not right off the strip, but you know what I mean? There's noise. That's what I'm trying to say. And this works really well. What it does not do is keep all the noises from coming in based on what an engineer told me. What it does do is make sure your voices don't leak out, if that makes sense. So it's not, um, it won't completely quiet all the noise from the outside, but it will make sure your voice doesn't leave wherever you're recording from, which is just as powerful. And if we don't have these things set up, again, in my little closet here, if we don't have these kind of things set up, then our voice will, I would call it like leaking, our voice will leak. And so it won't be as powerful. So we could have the best mic in the world, but then if our voice is leaking all over the house, then the voice is going to sound like this and it's going to, it's not going to work out. These are extremely affordable. This edition that I have does not exist anymore. They, it's out of print or um, out of print until I'm used to publishing. It's um, out of stock or I think they might've just discontinued it. These work great. The link that you have below is actually for the new Fango ones are actually pyramid design which as you can picture it, these little, little pyramids over here. Do you know what I mean? So check those out if you're going to be recording at home. I know folks that have fantastic podcasts with sponsorships and are making money with it and all that. And they will literally record it in like a hotel room or like their closet or in their basement. And they'll just set it up wherever it is. Not so much a hotel room, but they'll set it up wherever it is. And they'll go from there. And that's such... An important thing. If you're going to take your podcasting seriously, you don't want to waste your time with that. Also, I use these, uh, well, like I said, for the audio books, but also for some of the audio uh, programs that I've done elsewhere too. It's worked out really well. Again, I can't, can't recommend it enough. Um, if you're trying to stick stuff on the wall, I would recommend using the, um, I do not have a link for it in there, but you guys can figure it out. I think it's 3M, 3M, the double-sided um, Velcro. So it's like one side is sticky, just like a tape. The other side is sticky, like a tape. You put it on the wall, and then this part is Velcro. So I took this straight from my closet. I just peeled it off. So for me to show it to y'all, I didn't have to like it. <laughs> and we own this home, so I mean, we can tear it up technically. But we didn't have to tear up the walls or anything. I just peeled it off. And so that's excellent, you know, again, as far as if you want to upgrade and so forth. Heck, after this conversation, I might even upgrade to, uh, to the new pyramid style since that seems to be the new wave. So be sure and check that out. Hopefully that'll help you get, guys get to where you need to go. The last one, I mentioned it a few times. They are not an official sponsor, but they might as well be. Throat coat, you got to take care of your voice. The only reason why I actually have some semblance of a voice after doing lines for y'all for two, going on three weeks straight, is because of this. It's actually medicinal. It tastes pretty bitter. My kids have had it that when they've had sore throats, they've had a hard time with it. But if you like bitter stuff, you'll be able to get over it. It works really well. As the name says, it, it coats your throat. And as I've talked about, there are professional um, performers like singers and so forth, professional speakers, and particularly the voice actors that I connected with when I was doing my professional work for my last book, Career Remix. I went to a professional studio in downtown Vegas. That's where I learned about this. 
and I've mentioned it to other professional performers and they're like, of course. And I'm mad at them because they didn't tell me about this secret. I'm trying to share it with you now. That's why I'm mentioning it so much because it's been a lifesaver. If without this, I wouldn't be talking right now. So super affordable. The links are all below. All right. So we're talking about the best podcast audio equipment to get you going in 2024. If you have any particular questions, be sure and throw them in the comments or if you want me to go deeper into any piece of equipment. All right. So how do I get my lighting together? This is an ongoing process for me. Um, give a shout in the comments if it is for you. Because lighting can be tough, particularly if you're a person of color. And so you have to get the lighting just right or otherwise you'll get washed out or people frankly won't be able to see you. And so, and I'm wearing glasses. You can see a little bit of reflection, but it's way better than it used to be. Go back to Bring Your Worth episode one. I, as I say, if, if your old work isn't embarrassing, then you're not doing it right. So I must be doing great because <laughs> that stuff is embarrassing. But again, I'm here to show the progress, not the perfection. But as you upgrade your lighting, you'll see how much better it is over time. I'm trying to give you the, the hack, the tool, of stuff that's worked really well for me so that you guys can get to the next level uh, a little bit faster <laughs> and get some, some of the advice that I, I wish I got earlier. All right, so the first part is the uh, Amarin, I can never pronounce it, Amarin Aperture. Man, that's a tongue twister. Amarin Aperture, this is, um, I wouldn't call it necessarily OG, but it's definitely what the experts talk about. It comes in a case like this very uh, Pulp Fiction, comes in a case like this. And I'm going to show you the whole thing in a second. But it comes in a case like this. And basically, the aperture, and you two, y'all that are like, uh, it really into cinematography, you know, what I'm going to say is going to be really basic. I'm sure you know a lot more. <laughs> what, what the aperture does is it's a light source. So the light that you see coming down on me, which I'm about to show y'all, about to get a, a live view in a second. That's actually coming from this, this box. The box is about, um, about this big. So about um, this cubed. So you know it's, it's about four of these together, two by two. It gets really hot and you can actually control the, um, the, the, um, how intense it is by a percentage point. So you can get it down to like 50% or get it all the way up to 100%. I'll show, show y'all in a second. Highly recommend this. This one ran about 150 as of this time of recording, which is decent. You can go all out with these kinds of things. Just to give some context, everything that I'm mentioning here, you can probably get this whole setup for between four and five hundred dollars. And I've gotten it over time, so it wasn't you know it wasn't a big issue for me. But if you want to kind of dive in, you're like Damon, that's what I want. That's about how much is going to run you. No more than five hundred bucks. If you think about it, like you starting a podcast or starting a video podcast, and it could bring in sponsorship, depending on where you're at and how you do it, you can bring in advertisers, you can even bring in clients as I do as a business coach or as a public speaker, then that $500 investment is relatively small if you can get a $500, $5,000 or even more gig from it. Something to keep in mind, particularly if you have books coming out, it could be a really good time to support your book with content related to it. And again, I'm going to show you guys all this because it's all together. But let me go and get through the, these uh, the three part list to let you know what's happening. Then it's the Lantern Softbox. I didn't know what a softbox was. I'm going to be honest with you. But if you're a photographer, you already know the vibe. A softbox is basically like a big balloon. So if you have this really intense light, in this case from the Amarin, which again, you see, you see on my complexion, you see on my face, you have this really intense light. If you just beam the light on yourself, not only could you... <laughs> Could you hurt your ocular sockets, which has happened, but also too, it's going to be too harsh. The soft box is kind of like the name implies. It's like a big balloon and it's a big balloon. It blows up. It makes a whole bunch of noise, but it blows up really quickly. I'll show you. In fact, I can show you the device right now. You plug this into the wall and then you plug this into the soft box. The soft box is like a big balloon. Again, I'll show you all in a second. And then you blow it up and then you, you click it on. And once you click it on, you have the um, aperture that's bringing the light, but then you have the soft, soft box that's um, diffusing the light. 
And so it makes it spread. So that's why, you know, James over here and John over here and my building, you know, my buildings, my books, there are like buildings, but the, the books in the back, that's why they're set up in a certain way. That's why they have the glow on them. That's why they look like they don't look like they're in the shadows. That's part of the softbox. Otherwise, the light would just be one laser beam and only be hitting me. The last thing, which funny enough, I didn't know this part, but nobody told me, is that you actually need a tripod. <laughs> and so you're going to see some of my older lights. I have an older ring light. In fact, it's a newer light. N-E-E-W-E-R, which worked fine in the beginning, but I had some issues with it later. It's a fine product. It just wasn't my thing. You'll see some of my older lights here. And the older lights actually have their own stand. Once you start to get into that professional mode, which is when you're talking about apertures and, and uh, soft boxes. Let me get this out of my hand before it flies out. <laughs> soft boxes. <laughs> Told you to talk with my hands, right? Soft boxes and so forth. Then everything is separate. Just like if you buy a camera, once you get beyond the brownie cameras or the click and shoot cameras, you got to get your own lens. But nobody really says that. That's what I'm trying to break it down to y'all, where it's like, I got this stuff. And I was like, oh, wait, well, how do I put this up? Now I got a, a, lamp, you know, a soft box and, a, and an aperture on the floor. What am I supposed to do with this? It's like, oh, I need a tripod. Luckily, I was over, able to open out a tripod. It was super affordable. I happen to have a link in there for a cheaper one. I don't think it's any more than 20 bucks, maybe 30. Really affordable compared to the other stuff that we're talking about. Or you can use your own tripod if you're already in the photographer mode. All right. We're going to go ahead and take a quick tour because that is required to break it down for y'all. So let me go and take the mic. There we go. And then, oh, and then we're going to see, see the old one. There's the old newer one. <laughs> I know it's called newer, N-E-E-W-E-R. So that's the old one right there. And here is the soft box. So the soft box, again, um, I forget the brand it, it, it is, but it's, it's in, the, in the notes in the chat right there. I blow this up. You see the blow up right there with the little uh, device that I saw before, that you saw before. Now my kids are in soccer and other things. So if you play sports, particularly for the sports, particularly soccer, I think there's some other sports too. You're used to blowing up the ball. It's the same type of thing, except again, it's pretty noisy, but it works in like 10, 10, 15 seconds. You blow it up, you connect it right there. Here's an important part of it. On this part, which you might not be able to see that well. So forgive me for that. But in this general area, let's back up a little bit. You see the power supply. It'll probably be on your right. And you see a knob. That knob actually controls how hot it goes. So I'm going to put down the mic and then I, you can see for yourself. Hold on one second. So hopefully you caught it on the camera. It's uh, it's very subtle. And then over here, hopefully you can see it. There's a little percentage. And that digital dial says it's probably at 100%. So you can adjust that to whatever percentage you need it to be to set it up correctly for whatever type of picture you need. And that's super helpful because for... The other lights that I talked about, then there wasn't really that adjustment factor because then it would be like, it's either going to be up really high or really low and you're either going to be sweating in here or you're not going to be able to see, see anybody at all. This works really well with the combination that I have. I will keep you all posted. I just upgraded it earlier in the summer. In fact, one of my kids broke one of my lights, which is one of the reasons for the upgrade. But as they say, sometimes necessity is the, um, it's not the root of all evil, but it's, 
mother of invention. <laughs> That's what it is. I was like, it's not the root of all evil. Again, help me in the chat. I'm struggling today. <laughs> but hopefully, hopefully that gives y'all some insight as far as how my setup is set up. And then if you're ready to go ahead and uh, and let me uh, highlight it for y'all on, on Amazon as well. All right. So as of this live, this recording in September of 2023, then the uh, aperture, which is the light, the light, think light when you hear aperture, or the light source, it's uh, just under $200. And then the lantern softbox, which is the balloon that diffuses the light, that's running under a hundred. Let's just say under a hundred. And again, the um, the what's it called? The tripod is relatively affordable. In fact, the link that I have right here, number one, there's a deal on it right now, like as of this recording. So if you want to hop on it, you can check it out. Again, I'm trying to make sure that <laughs> you stay on budget and whatever you're trying to do, no matter how many resources you got. You know what I mean? That's kind of the key to side hustling or creating. You make sure you stay in budget, no matter what, how many resources you got. But then the deal right now, which again, I clicked on there, or I put the link in there. It's actually two of these for the normal price. So I have extra one right here. And obviously you saw the one being used. That's about, you know, six, seven feet up in the air. And it's worked out really well. Be sure and throw any uh, questions or comments that you have as far as with how, how it's set up, how it works. If there's anything I missed, please don't be shy. Let me know how I can support. All right. So that's getting your lighting together. We already talked about getting your audio together. And again, we're talking about the podcast equipment you need, video or otherwise, to go ahead and start in this upcoming year. And even if you're watching this in some of the replays, that's okay too. Go ahead and 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 check in, see what's see what's happening, and some of this equipment will get upgraded. I think the key thing when it comes to any type of technology is to worry less about the piece of equipment and worry more about the brand and how reliable they are. So I happen to rock with Apple. I know Apple does really good products. So whenever I get my next Apple phone, I'm not worried about the phone as much but more about if the company is going to be around, if they make good product, and if they're going to support the product after I buy it. And the stuff that I'm mentioning here, so far so good, and they actually came on the recommendation of other experts that I really rely on and trust, people that are on a much higher echelon, <laughs> podcast-wise and otherwise than me. So that's why I want to pass it on to y'all. It's, it's like, oh, no, these are, these are what the masters, these are the people that are on top of their game are using. And so as you get involved in video or audio podcasting, you definitely want to lean on the folks that are already there. Last but not least, all right, I got the audio together. Mic is good. Got the, um, what's it called? The soundproofing. Great. It's like, all right, I got my video together. So, you know, I, I, I have set up with the light and all that stuff. Cool. Wait, I got to share it. Of course. As they told me in grad school many years ago, if you're just writing for yourself, then just get a diary. <laughs> Nothing wrong with diaries or journals. I rock with both of them. That's fantastic. But the whole point of creating these things, at least if you're calling it a podcast, is to share them, video or audio. So I'm going to share some of the, my favorite tools. One of them I know experts use. The other ones I use regularly. So let, let's dive into it. First one is Riverside FM. I think it actually might be Riverside.fm if I remember correctly. Yeah, it is. It's right. How about you look down, Damon? It's right, right on the website right there. <laughs> this is the platform for audio podcasts. Whenever someone asks me to be on a podcast, it's um, uh, Brendan over at the Creative Nonfiction Podcast. Shout out to you, um, Srini over at uh, the uh, Unmistakable podcast. Shout out to you, um, Hillary Sutton. Oh, so many people, so many people, so many of y'all that I rock with, that I've been on your shows, we've had drinks together. You know, you, you've even come on my shows every once in a while. They rock with Riverside FM. Here are the advantages that I found, because I'm more of a video podcast person than an audio podcast. That's why I'm kind of deferring. But I'm name dropping to say these are, this is, these are the people that rock with it. Number one, 
each of the tracks are isolated. So if I have you on a podcast and uh, we do it virtually, as most podcasts are, we do it virtually, your audio track will be in one file. And then my audio track, asking questions or whatever I'm saying over here, interviewing you, will be on another one. That means that you can do special things with the audio mixing. That means that if your microphone is better than mine and mine happens to be a little bit weaker, then we can adjust the levels as opposed to it just being one mass, chuganic, we'll call it huge organic, huge organic audio file. And then we can't do anything with it because if you address this level, then this sounds going to be off. And so as far as mixing, you having, um, they call it local recording, local recording of all the participants. I forget how many participants it can handle, but it's a lot. So let's say you have eight people on a podcast, like you have Wu-Tang on a podcast. Each of them, each of the Wu-Tang members from Ghostface to, to you, God, each of them are going to be having their own audio file. And so then you can edit and mix it properly yourself or your respective engineers. That's number one. Number two, it's completely online. And so when I join people uh, that have a podcast and are doing it through Riverside.fm, they give me the website link. I get on there and I record it just like I record my TV show. There's not like software I have to download. There's not a device I have to use. It's just really smooth. And again, I've been on both sides. I've been a longtime journalist and have interviewed at this point probably thousands of people on the air and also just for my print journalism. And then, of course, I've, I've had the, um, the pleasure of having my best selling books and, and doing other things where I'm being interviewed a lot. So I know it from both sides. That's all I'm trying to say. This seems to work out really well for both sides. Be sure to check out the link. I'm an affiliate for, I think, almost all of these, but they are solid recommendations, again, based on the people that really know what they're doing and beyond me. I think there's a special discount you get if you use my link. So be sure and check it out. I think it might be 20% off the first month or something. Those things change all the time. But if you're interested in it, be sure and check it out. I... I, I love the program just as a guest <laughs> and the people I've talked to that really do this stuff. The people have done literally thousands of podcast episodes. They rock with Riverside FM too. So if you're looking to get started, this would be an excellent place to start. All right. For live broadcasts and live, because most podcasts are not live. I didn't even mention that part. When you do a podcast, most of them are pre-recorded. What we're doing right here with Bringing Worth uh, TV and what we've been doing through this whole month of September, this is live. It's different. It's nothing edited. You see me fumbling over the place. You might see like <laughs> one of my children's toys right over here. This is, this is raw. If you're doing this type of raw programming, as far as live streaming, what I would, what people now call a video podcast, which is essentially what I'm doing right now, StreamYard is a fantastic option. StreamYarn works well because again, similar to Riverside FM, you can send the link to the people that you wanna have on, on, uh, on your show and then they just do it straight through the website. I keep emphasizing that because not all software works like that. So this is a benefit, that's number one. Number two, with its most basic plan, which I believe is free, there's all kinds of stuff you can do. The biggest benefit of having the paid plans, and again, the link is right there. I'm a, I'm a paid, paid member myself. So again, I'm, I'm walking the walk on this one. With the paid plans, you can send it to multiple platforms. So right now, I'm talking to y'all on my LinkedIn. I'm talking to y'all through, obviously, Bring Your Worth at TV, which the main hub right now is at YouTube slash Brown Damon. Or you can just type in Bring Your Worth TV. You'll see me live there if you have a meta, meta experience right now. Not Facebook, but real meta experience. And lastly, I'm connecting with y'all through Amazon Live, which shout out to the folks at Amazon because they have a streaming platform. So every time I've connected with y'all live, then it goes to all three of those platforms. Super straightforward to set up. It was, um, I think it was a little bit tricky when I first tried to get on LinkedIn, but that had to do with the way that they were doing streaming because they were new to streaming when I started the show about three years ago. But since then, it's been a lot smoother. 
So the power of this is that you're not left into a platform. It's not saying, okay, you can catch me on Spotify and that's it. It's like, no, if you don't watch bringyourworth.tv, you could be on Amazon and then you'll get a little ping saying Damon's live right now. And you can come through and hang out with me for a couple hours. That hits different. You don't always have to go to, say, YouTube, or even if you happen to be connected with me on LinkedIn or see my LinkedIn profile, now you'll see a little icon that says live, and you know you can come through, put in your comments, or, or catch whatever I'm saying. There's a different type of vibe with that. StreamYard accompa uh, <laughs> encompasses, not accommodates, encompasses that. I want to say with the most basic plan, you can go to three different platforms, for the higher plans, I think you can go to like eight and maybe two dozen platforms. I'm talking like 20 platforms or something. So if you're still on X, formerly known as Twitter, if you're on Facebook, which if you've been watching for a while, you know I left Facebook a while ago. But, you know, if you're on Facebook still, um, I think you're doing Instagram and TikTok now. All kinds of stuff. Snapchat might even be on there. This would be the entry point to that. So if you're going to be doing the video, maximize it. Don't just say, I'm going to be on one platform. That's going to be my podcast home. Work with a platform or um, a system like StreamYard or the other option I'm about to give you. Work with one of those and spread it out. Other option, equally fantastic, is Restream. I like to kind of focus on one particular type of distribution platform that can distribute to a bunch of them. Right now I'm focused on StreamYard, but Restream, I've actually talked to the folks over there. I've actually used their product a few times. It is equally fantastic. In fact, in some ways it's stronger than StreamYard because their free program has a lot of the things that StreamYard only has in their higher program. Be sure and check it out. Um, I know that their community is really strong over there. Shout out to Anya and other folks who are leading their community. They have a great way of supporting the folks that use their product. And I've always admired them. If you want other options, then this is a great other option. Check out both. I definitely went back and forth with both when I first started. And again, it's kind of, that's the one caution I would have is that evaluate both of them and then choose one because you don't need to be on Restream and on streaming at the same time because their services are about the same enough where that would just be you duplicating the process. And I think they can reach pretty much the same amount of outlets, definitely the same type. But be sure and check it out. you got options here. As the link says, try StreamYard. Try it out. And I love both of them. You know, I rock with both of them. They're both fantastic. Shout out to both of the communities. Last but not least, if you're trying to get general insight as far as how to start and how to figure things out, Four Simple Secrets to YouTube Success in 250 Seconds. As you can see, this is my 250th episode, which was about a year ago, and I give as much game as possible. If you're starting off right now, if I was starting another channel, what I would do, all those hard-earned insights I got from the first 249 episodes, I share them in 250 seconds here. And I so appreciate that episode because even for myself, I was able to solidify all those things that I learned along the way. And again, you, you look back at my my first couple of episodes and they looked pretty rough, but that actually shows the progress because we start at the bottom and most of y'all can find, can probably finish the line. Listen, there's a lot of information there. If you want to start your podcast, audio or video in 2024, please start, but you absolutely need a strategy. Think about your strategy. The conversation, which dovetailed really nicely, that I had with James Oliver yesterday would be a good aperitif follow-up. <laughs> digestive. I always forget the name of that. It would be a good digestive to this big conversation. Consider this a big buffet. This would be your digestive. So you can kind of solidify all the things we talked about. I really want to get into the tactical and the equipment today. But you also need context as far as why you're doing a podcast. You need a strategy as far as how you're going to connect with whom you want to connect with. And, and again, today, you got the equipment. All right. Thank you for all the support every Wednesday and every Sunday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, Vegas time. 
We're going live all this month, every weekday. You can subscribe for free. And tomorrow, a mini marathon. It'll be about three hours long. How do I make time to rest and enjoy the marathon while I get a little bit of rest on Wednesday? Wednesday? <laughs> Wednesday? Wednesday. See? Again, tongue tied. It's time to call it off. <laughs> Much love to y'all. Remember, you can always bring your worth. You can always build from now. Take care of yourselves.